start with uh, the basics. Could you just tell us your, your name, um, how many years you served, and, and where, and in what capacity? Okay, I'm Miriam Rifkin, and I'm known here as Mimi. In fact, I'm known everywhere as Mimi. Uh, I never could pronounce Miriam very well as growing up. Uh, I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma originally, and I, I was in the service for two years during World War II. I, I served at Patterson Field for a while but after photo school in Colorado, and then um, served for a year in India. Uh, it was um, CBI headquarters. What is CBI? Uh, uh, China, Burma, India. Thank you. Toward the end of the war, they split, and the China group went up to China. So we just became the India Burma Theater. But that was outside of Calcutta. It was in a, a converted jute mill, a uh, great big thing, and right on the Hooghly River, which is a tributary of the Ganges. And it was, that was outside of Calcutta, right. And we, we lived in this thing with the glass roof and the men working on top of it and everything. And, um, and I worked in the photo. I wasn't drafting for a while because I could draw. So I, I used to draw, I forget the names of all those trucks. <laughs> but that's the kind of stuff, you know, for their manuals, but the photo lab was most of the time. And how did you come to, to serve? How did you, you went How did it happen? Yeah. Well, my brother was in the service. He was in the Navy, and my cousin who lived with us at the time was in the service in the Army. And I was at uh, Colorado University thinking, be feeling guilty, you know, like, uh, I should be doing something too. And it was a period of patriotism, as a matter of fact. And I really felt patriotic. So uh, my roommate and I came home that summer and we went around taking tests, you know, from the Navy women and the Army women. And the Army was the last one to whack. And I said, just a minute, and I went and signed up. And when I told my parents, they didn't say anything. I think they were stunned. And my mother says, well, maybe they can teach us something we did. <laughs> <laughs> and that worked. You know, so. so you said that while you were there, you were working and doing photography? I wasn't working because uh, I just came out of school, out of my third year at Colorado, and um, I didn't graduate, mm -hmm. so I tried to go back to school when I came back, but uh, went back on the GI Bill to art school. So I got a couple of certificates there, but no degree. And while you were in, in Calcutta, what, what kinds of, um, other than drafting, what, what did you do? Well, the photo lab. Uh, I was a uh, Mostly darkroom work, but we did once and once they sent me out with this great big case of uh, with photo equipment, you know, the big suitcase like that, you know. I hate to punish me, and I took uh, had to take pictures of them testing a new bomb in a pond, see how it would blow up, you know, that sort of thing. But generally, it was uh, lab work. So developing. Prints. Developing, yeah, and printing, and uh, they did they did some aerial stuff. You know, they did a lot of that kind of work, and just about anything. And of course, we had use of the cameras. We had these big four by five speed graphics. Were wonderful cameras. Uh, in fact, I think I've still got one somewhere. <laughs> uh, so we could always take pictures. So I I have my scrapbook here, and that's. Well, they, they took some pictures from there. Could you tell us more about the scrapbook? What, uh, what's, what's in it? And, and over what period of time it, it, did you uh, collect the, the photos in it? It was from induction through the end. I was only in two years. Uh, 
we didn't have the opportunity to sign up again, you know, for for to be a retiree. And so they, they were glad to get rid of us after that two years. But the scrapbook is, is my diary. And there's personal stuff, and there's all the pictures I was able to take, and, and it's out there. Um, so what they took from it were mostly cartoons that I had made of the minor trials and tribulations that we had, you know. Uh, but the major thing, I think, uh, was the fact that we were pioneers as far as women were concerned. There were a hundred of us that went over the first contingent. And um, we all lived in this one great big converted jute mill. And of course, how, how the climate affected us and how we affected it and uh, what we were there for. Like, I had, uh, when I was in photo school, there was uh, one of the teachers tried to flunk me out. And uh, I fought it and I got out okay. But when I was over in India, I ran into him. He'd been up in the jungles someplace, up in Assam jungles. And he came up to me and says, I really am sorry for what I did. <laughs> he said, will you forgive me, you know, because here, he felt like he'd been punished <laughs> out in the jungles. The so you, you mentioned some of the trials and tribulations that you represented in your cartoons. Well, Can you give us some examples? The cartoon, they're minor things, like like our clothing. When, we, when they sent us overseas, uh, it was all camouflage, I guess. They, we, they didn't want us, to, we went over on troop ships, and uh, so they didn't give us the clothes for India. They gave us clothes for Alaska. We had seven buckle Arctics. We had all kinds of heavy stuff, but we had three dresses. We never could figure out why. They, they were the same dresses the nurses used to wear, light shantung things. What are we going to do with this in Alaska, you know? And we didn't know where we were going until we were about three days out of, out of Bombay. And it was a 35-day trip. We went down under uh, Australia. So what else? Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, do you remember what it was, what sort of film you were processing? In other words, were these photographs of bomb sites? Were they aftermaths of... Uh... They, they did map work, and they did aerial stuff, I guess, that people brought in, you know, and uh, it was a lot of aerial mapping type of things. So uh, and we did the darkroom work of, you know, just developing stuff. What was some of the... You mentioned that because you had use of the camera, you took some, some photographs yourself. What were some of the things that you chose to, to photograph? Well, the way people live, that was one thing. The, what we saw in India, the manner in which people live, the people themselves, the buildings, the magnificent uh, architecture, um, and a lot of party stuff, you know, of ourselves, uh, some portraits, and just whatever we could. We carried those things around with us all the time. Did you get to travel much around India, or were you mostly in Colombia? Well, the women were, were more protected, so to speak, but we did get to travel. We, I went to um, Agra and Fatipa Sikra up in the, that whole area, Delhi. And, uh, oh, we went, uh, our R&R our, our &R up in Darjeeling. And that was magnificent. And we were the first group to go. So they hadn't developed any rules, you know, of what we couldn't do and what we could do. So we, we went up on the mountains and we saw the sun come bump over Mount Everest and Kanchenjunga. And, um, it was thrilling. And I remember there were a lot of nurses up there too at the time. But they sent us up in small groups. Uh, 
we had a wonderful time up there. It was so gorgeous. It was so gorgeous. That, that, where else did I go? Um, well, on the way back, really didn't get to travel around too much. The men did more. Some of them went all the way up to, way up there, somebody, into the mountains. Uh, we went to Karachi and uh, 10 days in Karachi on the desert. I sneezed for 10 whole days, all day long. And then we went to Casablanca. We were we went through different places, but we really didn't stop. So. How did you get to Casablanca? To Casablanca? Mm -hmm. Well, when we left, we flew all the way home. Uh -huh. We went came over by boat, but we flew back. So we flew to Karachi and then Abadan and I I don't remember the exact which one came first. And we stopped in Casablanca for three days. Mm -hmm. And then we went on to the Azores mm -hmm. and then to New Jersey. And then to, uh, so you, you left Casablanca by boat? No, we flew. Oh, flew. We flew, flew all the way. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What was and those Casablanca bucket like seats. In those days? What? What was Casablanca like? It was dark. <laughs> That's all I remember. Dark. It just. It it was uh, it was scary. Mm. Uh, we couldn't do very much. I mean, we had to stay together, you know, because it was a little bit scary. Mm. And we did go several places. People took us some places for some parties or something because we really had nothing to do there. Mm. Uh, they, I guess we were just waiting for the plane and time to take off, and we didn't know how long we'd be there. It, was, it ended up being three days. I remember getting lost. I lost my party, and I'm wandering through this dark place and empty buildings. It was scary. But it was interesting. It was very interesting to see, but we didn't get involved. Mm, right. You know, so so we, we spoke earlier to your friend Catherine, yeah, who also yeah. served at CBI headquarters. Did you know each other? Then, yeah, we knew each yourself, other. Uh, each we other didn't here. run around together, but we knew each other. She was, uh, she was first sergeant. And she had her friends. I had my friends. So we just, you know, you know people, but we didn't really run together or anything. But how did you was, happen to both find yourself here? It was funny. I I was here. I'd already been here, and all of a sudden somebody tells me there's somebody looking for you, and then she walked, and I recognized her immediately. And, you know, it's funny because a lot of people you don't. But I recognized her. She recognized me. It was very nice, you know. That's, uh, because when I first got here, there were a lot of, uh, of the older women from World War II still here. Most of them are gone now. But they had come together. A lot of them knew each other in the service, and they had come here together. But I didn't know anybody when I first got here. But it's very easy to get to know people when you do something and you're involved in things, so that was nice. Could you tell us maybe, uh, what did you do once you left the service? What, what, did, uh, what did it look like for you coming back to the States? Coming back to the States? Well, you know, we had been in this very hot weather. We came back in November, and we were discharging at Fort Dix, New Jersey. I came to New York, and my friend and I, uh, my cousin and his wife were living in, in New York, in Queens. We arrived we, in our boots. We had to have all this stuff made over there because you had this mosquito control. So we lived in pants and boots, long sleeve shirts. And I, all I had was a field jacket and we were green, you know, from living over there for a year. The food was not so good. We, we lived on, uh, I don't know what rations you call it. It was all canned foods from the States. So we had no milk, no, no dairy foods at all, no fresh vegetables at all. And the meat was... Okay, yeah. that's all I have to say about the meat. <laughs> I, I never knew what it was. Uh, 
They weren't sent us something to try to look like butter. It was the first oleomargarine that they made, and it was a big square like butter, and it was very yellow. But it was like plastic. You couldn't, it didn't melt, it didn't cut, it didn't do anything, you know, you had to saw it. it mm. So that was the closest thing we had to dairy, and that affected us, you know, as, uh, nutritionally. Because I used to wake up dreaming that I was drinking milk and couldn't get enough. I never cared that much about milk, but that happened. But you catch up quickly but once you, you start eating normally. They did warn us, don't drink milk, too much milk when you get out. You know, when we went up to Darjeeling, we were allowed to have vegetables and we picked out, we'd go from one restaurant to the other, you know, one after the other. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.